So here in section 16.3, you're going to be reading about Romanesque sculpture. And one of the things you want to do as you read is to pay attention to what they're, you're, they're telling you about subject. What kind of subjects are used, are represented in the sculptures? So look carefully in this paragraph and think about the subject matter. The other thing to think about is where these sculptures are presented and who's looking at them. So an important part of this sculpture is that a lot of it was made for portals, the doorways to the stone cathedrals you've been studying. So these stone cathedrals, these pilgrimage churches, have enormous, grand and dramatic portals, partly for symbolism. The Christians of the time used the metaphor that the church was the portal to salvation. The G, excuse me, Jesus and the church were the portals to salvation. And think about a portal of this kind of enormous size and scale greeting you if you were a pilgrim that arrives at the portal, at the doorway, after your long journey, your journey of sacred devotion to come and experience relics, to visit relics, to venerate them, you arrive and this is the transition point between the outside world, the world of sin for these Christian pilgrims, and the world inside where Jesus is the portal to salvation and to heaven. Keep that in mind as you look at and think about and learn about what kind of sculptures were used to give these portals their fullest meaning. First though, I wanna say a few points about the anatomy of these portals. I have these little blue arrows with what's this, what's this, what's this, what's this half moon shape area called, because I want you to learn the terminology that goes into the, the architecture of the portal itself. So this architecture, like the other architectural features you've learned, has its own vocabulary. And you wanna know that because it's gonna be referenced as you learn about the sculptures that are encrusted around this portal. So the lintel is the term for a horizontal beam. And a jam, a door jam, well, that's a familiar word. We all know door jams. In the case of these stone portals, this lintel and the weight of the stone above it is so heavy that it often needs an extra support. You can think of it almost as a third jam, and it's called a trumeau. Perhaps most important for the sculpture is this space, the tympanum, which is one of the <clears throat> key areas where sculpture carved visions are presented to pilgrims. So you will be looking closely at these two carved portals, focusing in on the tympanums, but also seeing here the trumeau and jam figures. And I want you to be really uh, paying attention to both the figurative style, how are the bodies made? What do the artists do in terms of proportions, anatomy, how they arrange forms, how they shape forms, and think about that in relationship to subject matter. How are style and subject matter working together? Well, here the subject matter is Christ in majesty, meaning Christ in the ultimate state of his power at the second coming, which is part of the book of revelations which you've already learned about as the apocalypse the end of the world so he's enormous and huge he's of a grand cosmic scale compared to the other figures is superhuman in a sense beyond human scale and in a mandorla a body halo to frame him as separate and beyond the composition is symmetric and iconic He's surrounded by the symbols of the evangelists, the four evangelists of the Bible, of the Gospels, the Christian Gospels, each have an, an animal symbol. Well, one has a man for a symbol. So as you think of subject and style, think about how the pilgrim, oops, that's not what I wanted to do, hold on. The pilgrim would have these lines from the Bible in mind, approaching the, uh, the portal. 
would have in mind these apocalyptic words about a vision of an open door to heaven. This is from the, the text that is being illustrated here, the text of the second coming. So think about what the artist is trying to do with a sense of an open door and Christ kind of manifesting out of it and a trumpet-like voice. A throne was there in heaven. Surrounding the throne, I saw 24 other thrones on which 24 elders sat. And so all of those elders are in there with crowns on their head. In front of the throne was something that resembled a sea of glass like crystal. You see that the artist has used a lot of stylization, a lot of, a lot of rippling lines like sea of glass, like peals of thunder, a sense of animated twisting and turning. Look at how the figures, even the animals are twisting and turning as if there's a burst of energy in the face of a revelation. So we have some Romanesque stylistic traits in the sculpture of elongated figures like this one, which is in the Trumeau figure, very elongated, lots of twisting and and flowing and rippling lines, rippling line work to suggest energy and animation. This figure is so famous because it seems to be squeezed and pressured and compressed. And it's a figure of a prophet holding a scroll as if the kind of the pressure of actually prophesizing the word of God is expressed in the whole flowing tension and ripple of line work. And so you're also gonna read about and study this tympanum sculpture at a church Saint Lazare in Auton, France. And you can see here the same use of an enlarged superhuman Christ in a body mandorla in the center as a kind of powerful spiritual force organizing the entire composition. The subject here is the final weighing of souls to decide who goes to, goes to hell or heaven. So the last judgment is the end of time. And this is what happens after, excuse me, I meant to say the second coming that you just saw is the end of time. And then there is this post-apocalyptic weighing of souls. These are the events that preoccupy the mind of the pilgrim who arrives at the church wanting to have salvation at the end of time and wanting to be on the side that is the right side of Jesus where the saved go to heaven. It is a convention in this culture for the left side to be called the sinister side. It's associated with the negative side, the side of the damned going to hell. So there's a bias against lefties here. I love this carved tympanum composition. It's got the Romanesque long, thin, expressive bodies. And it has lots of stylization. What it does so well is to show you that the stylization, which is also simplification, is there to amplify psychological power. That's why this has the power of a great comic or cartoon. This artist is extraordinary at being able to tell stories that make you imagine what it's like to be waiting in line for your soul to be judged like these people are at the end of time how that would actually feel well look at here's one figure just grabbing on an elongated angel help help lift me up to heaven and then you have these people in line they don't seem too terrified well they are actually pilgrims if you look closely they're wearing the satchel and the cap and the satchel even has the seashell. So they've gone to St. James. They're probably gonna do okay with this last judgment. These people are naked. They seem to be trembling more with fear. Um, maybe their husband and wife, she's lost her head, it's broken off. That's a tragedy of this old sculpture. But you can have this sense that they're sort of like trying to comfort each other in fear of what will come next. And you see here a detail showing you how skillfully the artists are making the fear of being judged terrifying. Look at this figure waiting on these giant hands as if sucking them up like two tongs, picking up an olive. And here's the scales for the souls. You have an angel here tenderly caressing. Look at how, how, how 
what powers of observation the artist has put into the, the way the gentle angel touches the scale versus the grip of the demonic creature, the hellish creature with its, its lizard-like form, its visible ribs or lacerated skin and its grimace of a mouth, how it's gripping and grabbing and another demon is like leaped on the scale. There's a kind of maliciousness that's expressed so powerfully, but then there are also these, there's a way in which this art artist gives you kind of a pleasure and a, a sense of humor and amusement in all these little episodes that are so inventive, like people hiding under the angel's robes or people being grabbed. Now that's terrifying, grabbed by the neck. So there's all this powerful emotional push and pull because over here on the side of heaven, you have these, sweet little stories of an angel lifting a figure up. And I want you to appreciate that this is so cartoon-like because the art that we see on these portals of pilgrimage churches is often an art for the masses. So it's an art for the people and it's appealing to them like our popular arts today in a kind of simple and artful power of emotion and storytelling.